thing you do after you seal the fish, uh, you paint him white, and then after that you go over it with pearls. The fact that I painted it white, I do my bluegill that way too. Uh, but one good thing is, uh, you can just as easily paint a reproduction if you get used to uh, painting your fish white first, then a reproduction is never a problem. Okay, first thing you do, uh, after you paint it white, we uh, uh, just pearl the fish real good. And uh, I've got right here a white pearl. Yeah, just we should get a good pearl on there. Okay, um, I got a little uh, lacquer thinner on a Q-tip, and I like to go ahead and clean my eye off now because what that does. Uh, later, when I clean the eye off, I won't have a white ring around my eye. If I go ahead and get uh, a majority of the eye, I go ahead and clean it off now. And plus when we're done, it, it'll just be real quick and then we're done. But uh, I'll show you what we do next. <clears throat> okay, I figured I'd just like to mention that uh, uh, nowadays, uh, you know, pictures are hard to find, and they got copyright laws, and it's hard to sometimes use printers. But if you got internet access, um, a lot of times you can copy. Okay, what I've got here, I've got, I've got yellow. Uh, cadmium yellow will work. This is just uh, bright yellow. Essentially the same thing. And we're going to put uh, probably about a light coat. Uh, we're doing essentially the same thing we did on our bluegill, or like I do on a bluegill. Uh, a lighter in the midsection and more intense. Now we're also going to put uh, some orange there. We're going to put. Uh, some orange there, but this color, I'm going to go ahead and carry it uh, down the belly and fade out around the end of the angle fit. I want to completely fade it out. Down the tail too. Some, uh, on the cheek area, uh, medium to light, medium, somewhere in that range, a medium light is perfect, right here. Now the pearl is showing through, that really looks good. And along the back, You want to fade out at or just slightly below the lateral line. At or slightly below the lateral line. Just ever so lightly. lightly on the fins. I mean uh, light. A light coat on the fins. Now if you accidentally get too much color on the fins, uh, you can go over them again with a white pearl and soften the yellow up a little bit. Yeah, 
ever so lightly. As a matter of fact, you can almost just leave them uh, white. And that's how lightly. Got my white pearl again. And I just wanted to show you, if you thought that your uh, yellow was a little bit too intense, uh, this white pearl has a way of uh, toning it down a little. And you may not even feel like you need to use this. So, Okay, now I've got, uh, in this case, i got bright orange, and uh, vivid orange would work. It's a little bit, uh, I've got it thinned down a little, and uh, this color, if you apply it light enough, you almost get uh, that peachy color that you sometimes see. Fish, fish is cheap. On the gill sometimes. Uh, uh, the, the gill rake is down here. And see if you put on light enough, it's got that kind of a peachy color. And that's accurate. According to my references. And it does come down into the fins a little. Come all the way down on the fins. But it does come down a little. goes down to about the about as far as the and it goes down to about the about as far as the anal fin and then kind of just tapers out. But I also see the color on top of the fish. Uh, it shows a little on the soft dorsal. And about like that is what it, my reference picture show it as. as intense on top as you did on the belly by any means. About a medium to light coat. About everywhere you put the yellow. Tail feed gets it pretty good. Especially on the outer edges. Seems like it gets it pretty good. Uh, the upper and lower hill. The center of the anal gets it a little. And that's about enough for the uh, pelvic.
much for the that's about as much for the pectoral. Okay, that's about right. Uh, I believe the soft dorsal gets more than the spiny dorsal, and, and you should replicate that. Uh, now I've got medium green, and I want to go along the back uh, over the orange that we put. And uh, at this time, I'm going to try to stay off the pin as much as possible. We will put a little green over them. a medium, a medium to light coat. If we can keep from killing out the orange all the way, uh, the better. And uh, most of the gill flap gets it too. Now, if we feel like we kill the orange out too much, uh, you can put a little bit over it. And we may do that too. And here again, just like I do on a bluegill, this medium green to fade at the lateral line. Now about a medium to medium light coat, I guess. And we're going to darken the back later also, so uh, keep that in mind too. Uh, if you go a little bit below the lateral line, that's okay. To go, I guess a rusty green color. A uh, rusty green color is about right. So that's what we're. Yeah, it looks like we about achieved that. Also, get the medium green uh, lightly. Uh, I can't. I can't say that enough. Uh, lightly. And you got some intense oranges on the end, though. I gotta go back and put more orange on my fence. Uh, the outer extremity is real orange in this uh, latest reference picture that I see. Okay. The, the, the soft dorsal gets a coat of green. And it also has some orange, uh, about the same as the tail. And a trace amount on the anal. I think the orange is not quite uh, orange enough on the back. You can go back and put more, but I think we're okay. I went back to my bright orange, and I kind of want to intensify the orange. Too much on the outer extremities a little. Slightly more on a little bit more on the anal. Uh, I 
think I got it about where I want it. Okay. Okay. Now we've got uh, neon blue. And neon blue, it has a real good effect. Even when it goes over yellow, it'll, it gives a real kind of a neon green effect. And so that's what we're going to try to replicate here. It's, it's a transparent blue is what it is. section that's not painted, but I'll even go up into the yellow, maybe even a little bit up in here with it, but mainly right here in the midsection, uh, about like you would on a bluegill, except on a bluegill I use violet instead of blue. Although some people use a blue instead of violet on their bluegills, also. Anyone about a medium to light coat, you just want it there. Uh, and you meet all the way up to the ladder line with it. Beat a little bit on the and the blue will mix with the orange a little bit and make a, a little bit of a violet possibly. Okay, that's about right right there. Maybe a lot missing on the fins, not much. And that's fine right there. And the blue will actually help make the fins a little bit greener. If you think they need to be greener, you, you can apply blue at this time. And that's one thing this blue is good for, is uh, that, uh, making the yellow fins look green. Okay, now we're going to put the body marks. And what I've got is a little bit of black. Uh, and I got it, not only do I got it thinned down real good, but I've also got maybe just a few drops of white in it, to just a few drops to make the black where it's not so harsh. Then I'm putting the vague markings in. They go about halfway down the body, right into the middle of this, and it kind of stops. It's kind of weird. But they also tend to pick up from the bottom ever so lightly, like it's the bar, and then it, uh, uh, let's see, I'll look at some more reference pictures here. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like the bars, uh, never really completely quit.
And that's about the intensity that you want the bars. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the fins uh, right now. And then from an extreme angle, angle spray my fins and maybe go along the back a little. Any more than that, and I'll go ahead and get my soft torso the same way. And I'm gonna go ahead and angle spray all my fins. Uh, you don't have to put a few drops of white in it, I just done it uh, slightly opacitize it a little and make it almost like a deep gray. Seems like I got better control that way. Okay, now <clears throat> with my thing black, I'm going to attempt to angle spray my fish. Uh, to bring the scales out without darkening them up too bad. I just want to bring out some scales. Well, it looks like I'm doing it. I'm just hitting the scales from an extreme angle. And as a matter of fact, most of the spray is not even hitting the fish. Just a quarter of the spray is hitting the fish from an extreme angle, and what it's doing is it's highlighting the scales. And it's the same technique I've done to bring out the spiny rays on the on the on the fins. Bringing out those scales the best I can without darkening the fish. Uh, uh, extremely too dark. Uh, up the back. And I'm still hitting from the angle, but I want most of it above the lateral line. I want most of my darkness faded out. No, the back is always the darkest part of the fish. Around the eyes here. Come in with a counterclockwise rolling motion and I go between each spine that way. right there at the point, then down a little bit. My bright orange. And what I want to do is make spots actually come up and connect to the bars that we've made.
like that. Uh, not a lot of them. It's, it's easy to get caught up and put too many spots, and you don't want to do that. This taper out about the end of the angle, about the end of the angle pin. convincing. find some of the fins, uh, the dorsal little, the tail, just to add a little bit more orange. And I even if, uh, put a little bit more up here, I got white. What I'm going to do is what? So I want to replicate that. Just right there on the end of the spine. The very outer extremity and I mean the very outer extremity same with the tail
right uh, you might want to put a little bit more of your medium green right through here uh, if you feel like your fins were too dark uh, go over them again and so make sure you got all your colors right and you can do the end of your uh, pectoral <laughs> this way too but you can look and make sure you got enough orange and enough orange that you like on your cheek and your gill. And on your cheek and your gill, you see the green and the orange, so you almost have to mesh them together. Uh, and you may want more green than orange. Uh, most of the gill is green in actuality. Just the bottom part of it is orange. And the cheek is a different story. Uh, a lot of times the cheek has got more, the lower end has, has got a lot more. The upper end of the cheek is green, the lower end has got a little orange. So most of your gill flap is green, and then your back has got, it's a mixture of both. So look at a good reference, you want to be able to see both on there, and that's how you know you've got it about right. Now one thing that I've noticed, I don't have enough I like to see a little bit more green in my fins, so I'm going to put a little bit more green where you can see them. I'm not going to, uh, mainly at the base of my fins, uh, I'm, I want the green to extend out before it turns into orange. So that's what I'm going to replicate on a majority. Uh, this one is correct, but uh, the anus, the angle fin and the tail fin, are the main ones I'm worried about. Top dorsal, correct. So I'm just going to worry about my anal and my tail fin. Just a little bit more green, the medium green on there. Uh, I wanted maybe a little bit more green. And maybe I wanted a little bit more yellow too, but... That's going to work right there. I'm going to leave that be. A little bit of green in them. And I'm just going to let that be good enough. Okay, I've got my... <clears throat> uh, you can use black green for this too, I'm sure. Uh, this is black green. And I start right there at the dip of the top of the mouth. Uh, just like a person has a dip in the top of his mouth, uh, fish do too, right here on the top in between their lips. That's where I start painting on all my fish. Then I go around the side. And when I paint the lip, I let the overspray hit this back here. I let the overspray hit this back here. You can see the maxillary a little bit. Uh, this uh, carapace or whatever you want to call it, it's covered as maxillary because his mouth is shut. If his mouth was open, I'd show you better. And you do the same thing to the other side. And uh, this black green is a good color if you still want to tone your back down a little bit more and still have kind of a green color. Black green is a good color to do it with. But here on the bottom lip, uh, you let some of it go. You let uh, some of the spray goes on the upper lip, but with his mouth shut, you can't see it. But then some of the spray goes on his lower lip, just like on a bass. Okay. Tone around his face. Uh, now you can go this way and you can angle spray from this direction too, but with his mouth shut you can't really tell uh, what it is I'm doing. But I went around his eye. Around 
right along the top of the back, but I want to darken the back up any. You may not want to, you may want to leave it. But it's kind of a dark fish anyway. You may want to leave well enough alone. Just on these guys, And the black green is also a good color to paint the back of your uh, your pans with. Uh, you know where you card it, where you cardboarded the pans or whatever, and you can paint your seam with it. And even this back on this side. So keep that in mind. If you wanted, you could go over your bars with this black green and make the bars darker if you wanted to. And and then again you may want to leave well enough alone. But at any rate uh, you can and to see if anything didn't look quite right. And one thing I noticed, it seemed like I could have carried my orange up a little bit higher. kind of bright. It has a better effect if you do that. And also, uh, with the spotting, you can mix a little. But if you, you, you get a little bit of gill red and mist on your breast area and your lower belly, kind of dark, uh, make the orange a little bit redder. Uh, this is optional. You don't have to do this. And then when you get about where you want to uh, leave, you leave well enough alone, leave it. Here I got a little uh, orange pearl. Uh, they call it orange pearlescence. Uh, and this is optional too, but if you want to get a little sparkle to your orange, I guess you could go ahead and ever so lightly put a little everywhere you have orange. got uh, I got some uh, pale blue and the spotting on these guys is a little bit uh, I guess you can say a little bit tricky it's kind of like almost uh, broken up spots Almost like broken up spots and lines. <clears throat> I 
clearly lines for sure. Although they'll tend to make uh, some kind of pattern, although not a line, they will tend to make some kind of pattern, I guess you could say. Almost like two lines, but uh, very, very broken up. Getting it as intense with this as you want it to. Looks like it's pretty crisp. It's almost like made up with a bunch of little dots. And even on the maxillary there's some, but it's a uh, Even his maxillary has some a little, but it's covered up. Here to this little bone right here. Other than that, Thing, you can probably connect some of them a little bit better. Some of them. Just to uh, break up some of this uh, monotony here. Here there's a couple of couple of spots. So I guess you just fill them in. Find a good reference picture and uh, fill them in. If you want to, uh, you don't have to do this. Now I've got want to, uh, you don't have to do this. Now I've got neon blue. Uh, now, if you do it too much, you're going to make the fins purple because we got so much orange on there. But if you do it light enough, you can kind of lighten up the white on the end of your uh, on the end of your uh, fins and make it just have a slight bluish tint. Then you might could uh, go over the back a little bit and maybe a little bit more right in the middle uh, if you want to. It's optional. You don't have to. Okay, here again, you want to just go to that outside extremity of the, or uh, you want to clean the eye off, but you don't want to go past the eye. Uh, I put a little lacquer thinner on the Q-tip, then I roll the Q-tip one time uh, on my pant leg, so I, the excess wouldn't drip out and ruin my paint job. And now when I clean the eye off, I'm not going to have a white ring because I cleaned the off after I painted it white. 
and the other subsequent colors are just so dark, uh, you sh if you do it right, you shouldn't have a white ring, and it makes for a better mount. That way you don't have to sit there and try to repair. Top coat. Uh, I'll set the paint with gloss top coat. And uh, then you can go back with uh, your favorite gloss. Polyurethane gloss is good. I just brush it on. Um, or They've got some good stuff out on the market. The taxidermy companies do. And they've probably got the best stuff. And, uh, but I'll get this gloss top coat. And I'll just kind of set the paint. Uh, with the first coat. And make sure you get every every part of the fish. And then you want to let that sit for a minute. Then you go back over it with a heavier coat. Okay, now we got our gloss top coat again. And I'm happy with all my colors. Uh, a lot of times when you have to put your gloss on for a clear coat or whatever, you can see your colors better. And I got my back right. I like the green that's in it and I like the orange that's in it. So I When I was trying to achieve a, a little bit of both, a little bit of orange and a little bit of green to make the back, I achieved it, in other words. But now you can go on with a, uh, every coat of gloss. Make everything look real good and wet. And here again, it's better to put it on in layers, so it's not wrong to go ahead and go back and put another layer on. This is how I paint 